This is uh, Morten from Inkish, and uh, uh, in this uh, long journey of interviews for uh, from exciting people that are going to Hunkel Innovation Days, I come now to talk to Hans from uh, One Vision uh, at, in Germany. And uh, Hans, uh, welcome to Inkish. Thank you, Morten. Uh, I th- I see your name, and I see you at almost everything that relates to. Digital. Uh, I see you uh, with uh, with uh, at trade shows. I see you at at uh, different events, and now you're also going to Hunkler Innovation Days. Um, uh, let me let introduce yourself, please, and let me know what what One Vision does. I I have an idea, but I want you to tell me. Okay, let's start with me. I mean, I, I have been with One Vision for yeah ages, as you see, with a bit of my gray hair. Uh, <laughs> So I'll, I'll, I'll around the printing business for around 30 years. Uh, so collected a bit of uh, experience, let's say, and uh, saw a lot of change. That's the interesting part. Uh, one vision. Uh, I mean, we, we started out very early in the newspaper business to basically automate pre-flights of ads and pages and what's always one of the core things for me is that there we learned how important it is to produce on time. I mean the big newspaper presses they start exactly on time or a lot of chaos and bad things happen. People really don't like it if the press of the newspaper press is late. That's and true. so that, that that's one of our core experiences, A, the reliability, because if you want to start on time, all the process ahead of it have to work reliable and the software they use. So that was a good training camp basically for us. And, and since then, we basically continue to, to automate more and more parts. And, and so you, you just mentioned digital, and that's one of the core things, I guess, uh, as, as a point all digital workflows in the pre-press press and post workflow parts of our printing customers that's what we optimize and always a bit more in in that regard i also like the motto of the hunkler show uh, yeah. so it fits very well to us fantastic and um i think that um, I mean, there's a, quite a few software companies attending to Innovation Days uh, uh, this year, and I, I I believe that when we look at the productivity of the of the digital presses today compared to maybe just ten years ago, uh, they are faster. Uh, they are used for way more applications, and uh, and the need also the how we we buy and sell print is changing. So yeah. the need for for a uh, uh, automated and, and and really really strong uh, workflow is becoming more and more important, uh, and it seems that you are ready to to take on that challenge to basically continue on your legacy of the newspapers to deliver that reliability. What is when when you talk to customers? What is the biggest uh, fear or or the biggest requirement they have when they look into a, a supplier and and really invest in this? Uh, uh, a level of automation. I mean, let, let's start with what's often the biggest fear is that, uh, I mean, as we're talking with digital, I mean, it's it's piece of one production. So, I mean, be it book on one, all, all the individualization. Mm-hmm. And, and w- what they often think is that as a lot of the jobs or some, some say every job is different, they can't mm-hmm. automate it. So uh, that's an assumption that's not really true, because uh, as, as you can think of a process uh, that how you handle the files and the jobs, that means that process can be mapped. I mean, that, uh, not every process uh, is ideal for a 100% automated workflow. I mean, customer data is, you can't, we, we can repair a lot, let's put it that way, but not everything. There is a lot of creativity out there and uh, 
the customers know that. I mean, that that's the other thing. What what can we repair? Mm. Uh, on on the vendor side, uh, it's it's actually often the integration parts. It's the I integration mean, integration part. So so, yeah. so people can have a fear of if they invest in something that uh, uh, that influences the entire business. They can like you know. I can I don't know about you, but I worked in a company once that invested in a new ERP system, and and mm. it almost almost took the company down because it was so like everything didn't work for some time, and everybody was so I mean we were yelling at each other. Let me tell you like that. So that is probably the fear that people have when they invest in radical new technology. Will it interfere in daily operations? But that doesn't need to be like that, right? No, it doesn't uh, need to be that, like that. I mean, the first step is any way that we go out and and audit how the customer works. Because mm-hmm. uh, I mean, we all humans, and a new workflow works best if if they don't have to change a lot. I mean, we we try to integrate into their current processes. I mean, of course, if if the process is not ideal, we try to point it out where they can improve it. But the the, the closer you can map their current process and and automate that and don't need the people to change the better it is because mm-hmm. i guess uh, taking your example of the erp i mean i know some of the stories where, where the company had to adapt to the erp and yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> uh in general not all people like change let's put it that way yeah and and so of course even if you like change you have to train yourself and yeah. get into new stuff so uh, if you can avoid that and, and map the workflow that they use, the, the good parts of the workflow, and don't touch a lot of the things, uh, how they operate, that's the best thing. Mm. And, um, you know, I was just thinking because, I mean, uh, when I see how software is developed today, I mean, in the old times where you had, like, limited uh, resources, uh, limited memory, uh, internet was not as fast as it is today, uh I think that there was a lot of need to adapt to a single kind of uh, uh, experience with an IT system. But today, uh, with where I mean, even the desktop computers in an office is really, really powerful. Uh, so uh, the software that one vision produces and installs and and, and optimizes with the companies, do they take advantage of these? So you can, because when you say they adapt to the user, does it mean that every user can pretty much? Uh, I would say customize uh, the buttons and and uh, how it looks and feels into their work, or, or what do you mean with, with it? I I mean, in an ideal world, I mean, as we're talking for an automated workflow, what's what what does everybody dream of an automatic ah, workflow? Okay, yeah, yeah. You don't have any user interface because the the work just happens. Does it ourselves? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you want you want to reduce the touch points. So yeah, in yeah. an ideal world, you don't see anything. I mean, yeah. in reality, yes. People at least want to uh, have the good feeling that the jobs run through. Mm. So uh, we, we have different levels of user rights so that, that not everybody has to see everything. So you can basically uh, cut down of what the people see. They can uh, adapt it. But typically in, in on the user interface side, uh, people just see the jobs flowing and, and control it. So the, that, that's actually what it's about. I mean, of course, there are also interactive steps where you have to okay a file or choose a route like to which printer it should go or ask some questions detailed questions after a first evaluation of the files uh, if it's good enough to print if if for example if we have to automatically repair things or if you check for resolutions i mean not all low resolution stuff is bad i mean some some plans for example are okay to be printed so sometimes you want to have a, a human okay or a human interaction. Mm. I mean, and that's typically done on the web browser, so you also don't need any special tools on, on the client side. The software is all controlled via web browser. Mm. Um, when you started and worked with the newspaper industry and now you are moving into, I, I know that you have done that for years, but I mean, into other segments of the graphics arts industry, is there a lot of things that you can utilize from, from, for example, the newspaper uh, industry, and 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 also use that kind of logic and mentality into to other segments of the industry? Parts. I mean, of course, the the, the foundations are the same. I mean, uh, we started 
was handling PDF. We, we developed our own PDF technology, color management technology, all that core stuff is the same. I mean, uh, of course, with digital printing, some of the stuff actually gets easier. I mean, you don't have to really care about separating, generating plates or, or dots, because uh, that's on the printer side. Uh, but some of the other things then, of course, get more complicated, like the imposition. I mean, if you if you talk about large format workflows where you drive cutters, uh, mm. uh, dri driving those post press devices. I mean, in general. I mean, also on the book side. I mean, wh whatever cutter finishes, uh, you all want to integrate that. I mean, there's that. That's a complete one basic thing in the newspapers i mean there is no there there, there is there is some cutting but it's in line in in, in the complete press setup mm. so yes core technology is the same and a lot of a lot of modules and tools around that i mean uh, also a lot more integration i mean that's actually if we're talking what 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 do we bring to to hunkeler since the last show uh, we were it's a lot of integration on the front side make it easier i mean communicating with the systems making it easier we, we always have general tools to integrate so that we can integrate it with everybody and then next step is have specific integrations for specific tools certify that so that it's easy to work with and easy to apply and and create a workflow very fast and you have mentioned tools and modules so does that mean that if let's say that I have a printing company that is specialized in books and I, I talk to you, uh, then you can basically build in modules and tools the, 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 the flow I need in order to optimize my production or do I buy everything in one box and then only need, uh, take out what I need? How, how, how do you, I mean, I take there's a process where you said that you, you, you have to analyze my business. You have to have to get an understanding of what I need and then when you move to the next phase, is that where you pick which tools I need? Yeah, I mean, there, there, there we are actually were with the talking to the customer. What, what, what's their pressing needs? The, the real pain points, because because you also uh, can buy the software in pieces. I mean, if if you want to have just an automated imposition uh, where everything runs through to the press, uh, you can start there. You can go okay. with an integration to the to your MIS system, to your ERP system, or to your web shop, so that the jobs flow automatically from there. You, you use the data from the order to pre-flight that. Is the size correct? Is the colors are correct? And all that stuff, normalize the PDF, uh, font integration, color management, so, so you can grow into that system. So mm -hmm. that, that, that's step one, what, what are the needs? And then you can build like, was the book workflow? The typical things are, yeah, check, checking the data. I mean, sometimes you want to make sure that there is a bleed. So we have a module to automatically uh, generate missing bleeds so that, that you're always safe on the printing side and uh, in position on the output side and up to controlling post-press devices. So mm -hmm. like uh, you have a Duplo and then we directly can send uh, XML commands to the Duplo mm -hmm. to adjust because then, especially if you have a lot of varying formats running across that production line, then automatically the Duplo is set up for it. Mm -hmm. And what about, I mean, if you look at workflow today, I mean, uh, I think that a mantra maybe some years ago was that automation was mainly in the pre-press side. But today I think that uh, automation goes all the way to from customer delivers files into an FTP or through a web uh, interface to pricing to uh, uh, even to logistic solutions and packaging solutions. I mean, is one vision covering the entire flow? In, in that sense, yes. I mean, from uh, so we don't have any uh, web shop front end, so we take the data from from the commercial side. Uh, let's call it that way. Whatever it is, uh, uh, web to print portal, an ERP system, uh, the customer's mid, mid system, where they or or uh, in in a number of cases also their custom production control software. So we, we have a number of customers that have their own production control software basically in between uh, which interfaces with our APIs and uh, send the data to us. And that's that's the other thing. I mean, 
besides the controlling of the complete workflow to the output devices, uh, adding barcodes, adding tracking barcodes. I mean, if we talk, uh, what's the difference to the last trip? Uh, Hunkler show, I guess it's it's on you, the needs. You, you said Dro you said trooper, didn't you? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Hunkler. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What your what your heart is full of, right? <laughs> Sorry, it was yeah, just. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I I have been at the last Hunkler. I I th there I was at the booth. I I didn't have booth <laughs> service at the last trooper. Yeah, that's a good thing. I just could could look at the trooper show, but yeah. Okay. So, sorry, H sorry to Hunkle, interrupt you. Yeah, Hunkler is near trooper is coming fast. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> let's look at that way. But yeah, uh, so another thing may, I, yeah. I I thought is is really delivering back data mm. to those front to those yeah let's either front end or top level systems so. Uh, production data, cost data that we that we have, uh, status data. They want to know where the job currently is in the workflow, and and making sure that it passed pre-flight, that it passed printing, that it passed a certain output, and so there there are also controlling steps in the workflow that you can integrate and and also tell the system then uh, where where the job is. Mm. Um. Sounds like yeah. I mean, because coming from a, an industry as as vast as the newspaper industry, it seems that you have a lot of uh, experience in developing uh, core technologies and understanding the entire flow of things. Uh, do, what is I mean, when you go and talk to customers, what is is there is there anything like uh, a few top three KPIs for why you should invest in One Vision? Yeah, of course you you have to show what where. Where the benefit is, I mean, uh, nowadays there there are a few points. A, if you work in a digital printing, typically you have uh, certain SLAs on the delivery. I mean, I, either if if you print for somebody else, then you're not even in control of that SLAs they are given. I mean, that's often the thing. Can we? Uh, I have an S. I ha after I received the printing job, it has to be out after two hours. I mean, it has to be shipping after two hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, how how do you control that in a manual workflow? Uh, that's that, a very that, good question. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, human touch points mostly guarantee that some of the jobs will not meet the SLA because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the people are missing. I mean, currently uh, everybody is just talking about not getting any people at all, so not even talking about qualified people. So uh, that that's one of the reasons to automate. I mean, the other reason, the better, uh, the the even better reason is to automate if your business is growing and you want to cope with that with the current staff. So uh, keep on that and then keep the machines running. Maybe uh, sometimes unintended or or more. Uh, The same people can control multiple machines. I mean, switching between printing machines and just see that everything is fine and uh, the software and the machines do the hard work. It's funny because uh, I think that one of the tendencies I see also when I talk to printing companies around the world is basically what you just touched upon, that basically you want to have a last minute decision on what equipment you want to produce on, right? Because the, the flexibility of your production needs to meet the SLAs and also needs to meet the, all the other aspects of of your business so um, that sounds that sounds like very good uh, uh, very good um, kpis um uh, hans uh, at uh, hunkle innovation days uh, what are you bringing to to lucerne two things as as i mentioned i mean as we on on all of the releases we do two releases a year so there is uh, one new in preparation some of the new pieces are more integrations so more devices i mean uh i i don't want to list everything that we did since the last hunkler show because uh, it happened a few years uh but uh especially on the book side i mean where where uh there are a lot of vendors in in post press on the hunkler show i mean that's that's the core of Hunkler themselves and their partners on the show. Uh, for example, Plogmatic integration is new uh, there that we drive those. And on the other hand, uh, as as I mentioned, one of the things that came up, uh, let, let's say last year roughly, is really this 
I want to get more information where my job currently is. I mean, some of the things can be automated. Uh, some devices already report that back. Not all devices do that. So one of the topics there is uh, that we have new uh, touch points that you can create where, where you can manually uh, report the status of a job. Mm. So if, 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 if there is some binding stations uh, where books are put into covers, then you can uh, either manually input that or in an ideal world, maybe scan the barcode and uh, deliver that back and automate it, uh, communication to the ERP or production control system knows where the book now is and that it's soon ready to ship. And uh, all this you will show in demos, I guess, right? And they also sit down, talk to people about the specific needs, right? Yeah, we can demo the software, we can analyze their their questions up front. I mean, that's the important part for us to really understand uh, what does the customer produce, how, uh, where are his major points, what's what's the major volume, uh, find out what's, what's the things that can be automated. So uh, when a customer then wants to have an installation on his side to test out the stuff, we prepare a prototype workflow oh, really? that shows that shows him basically where, where where really the benefit is i mean we want to show the clear benefit to the customer on some of the products that he runs through his production so that he has a clear understanding what what's to be gained from the software fantastic hans uh, thank you very much for your time here on inkish uh, i look forward to meet you and your team in the uh, Sir, and uh, I'm sure we will have more time to talk about all the nice little details of uh, of One Vision and 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 all the the thing that you do that is so needed for for people that are into print. So uh, thank you very much for your time here on Inkish. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Morten. Looking forward to Lucerne. Meeting everybody there. Every all the visitors are welcome on the One Vision booth.